ho! Welcome to a CISO's best friend, the pen tester. My name's Sean Atkinson, CISO for the Center for Internet Security, and I'm here with my best friend, Chris Elgy. Hey, Chris. Hey, Sean. How's it going? Did you have a good time making it up here to the North Pole? Took me a while, but I got here eventually. You get a little farther to go than I do, but not much. Uh, yeah, and I'm Chris LG. I'm with Counterhack Challenges. We, of course, make uh, the Holiday Hack and, and other range products, and we also do a fair bit of pen testing. I'm glad to be here with Sean, uh, one of one of my best friends. So we want to talk about consorting with the enemy and getting past uh, this us versus them ideal. So we'll add some reasons why. We'll talk about blue responsibilities. Chris will talk about red and then we'll conclude. So let's move into why. So why it, pen testing really only exists because it makes blue better, makes a defensive posture more resilient. And pen testing is not a red versus blue exercise. This is not a competition. What it is is to understand and bring value to an organization through pen testing. And really the ultimate why here is to understand how we're going to do that. So we're building risk mitigating capabilities. We need pen testers to assess the strengths and weaknesses of that capability to provide value back. So it provides expert assessment utilizing TTPs to prove resiliency of controls and identify those weaknesses. So value is not generated from a blue perspective if we're gonna restrict the scope on what pen testers can do. We need to open up we need to allow pen testers access into our infrastructure beyond layers of defense in order to test those layers if any one of those were to fail. And success is not scored as a clean report. Really need to emphasize that this is not a grading exercise. This is to identify value and continual improvement. And for any organization, and, and we'll use the CIS Critical Security Controls 18, this should be the force multiplier of your security program. So let's move in then to blue responsibilities. So we have Violet here uh, looking at her risk strategy. Uh, and what she did, and we'll move on to the responsibilities here, is with a restricted scope, thinking everything, uh, not really thinking everything through from a risk perspective, blew up. And that's because there was not enough red and Violet turned into a blueberry. So what we need to do in order to avoid that is identify our own goals. We're going to look at compliance, we're going to understand business risk, and this is not security theatre. This is not something to get a report, clean report, we're perfect in every way, shape and form. That's not what we're trying to do. This needs scope, so we need to look at new web, web applications. We need annual review, we've got to look at on-premise infrastructure, we've got to look at cloud, physical, wireless, social engineering, bring all of that to the table, because in each layer of this infrastructure, weaknesses lie and we need to find them. We want permissive rules of engagement, so it's okay to have checkpoints, we want to have communication, we need this backwards and forwards between the two teams in order for us to become best friends. We're going to lay the cards on the table. We're forwarding alerts. We're looking at open source code. We've got known weaknesses that we're sharing through past reports and also change management to identify what we've done to improve since the last pen test. Planting flags is also good as well. This allows multiple stages of alerts and uh, really findings to be exposed through this process. Having those flags identified shows which layer of our infrastructure either was weak or which was not found is strong. We want to gamify the experience. We want to check in with the pen test team and, and do the detection game. We found you at this level of alert and allowing us to report that back to the pen tester to know the avenues uh, that are working and those that are not. The findings are not for shaming. We've got to appreciate that this is found by our friends, not the adversary. Who do we want to find these issues within our infrastructure? I'd rather it be a friend than an enemy. And we want to continue, the continuity of the engagement really is make sure they come back and test again. Next time we will make it more difficult for you, friend. That's the adage we need to have with our pen test teams in order for them to come back and see what we've done to continuously improve. Over to you, Chris. 
<laughs> John. You know, as you go through that, it, it makes me think of uh, Professor X and Magneto. You know, they're 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 enemies, but they're friends, and they and they keep coming back to that chess table over and over again. Uh, maybe maybe less of a good friend would be someone like like Biff Tannen here, and we don't want to be Biff Tannen as pen testers because you may end up in a in a pile of stink. Um, the the first thing we we need to make sure we're doing on the pen test side is go back to what Sean said. They they have goals. There are reasons they're having a pen test. Maybe it's compliance or something like that, but but probably they actually want to know where their security uh, concerns are as it relates to business risk, right? And and that never means that the that the president wants to see how many shells you can get. The, the company president has no idea what domain administrator is, most likely. Um, although probably not, not true in Sean's case. It's very technical. Uh, we also want to check in all the time, right? We, at least once a day, we want to say, hey, this is how far we've gotten. These are the things we've tried. Um, this is what we're going to try next. Or maybe in the middle of the day, hey, I just found this, this old service. I think I can throw this exploit at it and get a shell. Um, is, is now a good time? Is this an okay thing to test? Because uh, we don't want to end up in a, in a pile of manure. Um, I, I, I will tell you one time I did throw something at a at an edge router that I thought would be a, a cool exploit and it ended up just just kind of locking the thing up pretty hard so this this small financial was disconnected from the internet for a few minutes while they while they rebooted the device um, learn from my mistakes um, how about this too? make make sure you do get caught at least once during the test right like um, like Sean said this can be a game thing back and forth uh, hey did, did you catch this uh, no I didn't but I but I saw that um, and that that gives them a win in the in the test, so that your your report isn't just here are all the things that you need to fix, but hey, here are the things that you're doing really well, and that can be super meaningful. And honestly, it makes the it makes the uh, recommendations more easy to, easy to digest when there are things that, that were seen as, as as doing well. And also, too, gives the organization some idea of, of what types of attacks they can detect, so it helps them tune their uh, their detection game. Don't be the naughty pen tester. If you're sending phishing lures about injured children or uh, or, or back to office <laughs> requirements with with uh, pandemics, right? You you are a bad pen tester and you're getting a lump of coal. So uh, be sure you you don't do that. And and if you happen to find personally embarrassing information in in the CFO's you know my documents folder, uh, that's not in scope. Okay, even if it says everything's in scope, that that's not cool. Uh, let's let's just uh, move along to something else. Um, and then here too, we, we to gauge risk and to give recommendations that are actually going to be implementable by the organization. We have to communicate. If if we see something like you know FTP being used back and forth between hosts to, to transfer data, and we say hey you got to shut that down, but we don't understand that that's core to how they do billing, then that's that's a worthless recommendation. So make sure you're you're talking a lot and understanding what what really makes sense for for that group. And and also too. Again, like Sean said, findings are not shaming. You you aren't winning either, right? It isn't it isn't they win if it's a if it's a blank pen test report, or we win if there are lots of findings. There, there's no shaming. It's it's just about uh, about helping our friend and making sure that uh, that they they best understand their risk and can move forward and grow in maturity. And then lastly, for the report, um, you know, we we definitely make a habit of sending draft reports to all our clients so that they've got a couple of weeks to look at it and say, geez, you know, counterhack. You, you misinterpret this this here. You, you marked it as a medium or a high, but but really that's uh, you were just looking at sample code. Um, so so it never goes to development or, or certainly production. So um, that gives um, the client a chance to make the the report something even better. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. And ultimately it becomes show me the risk. So we're having this pen test for a reason, right? This is the whole point. It's focused on the goals, not a report guard. It's not an assessment of the security team uh, and whether or not your job's valuable. It is. This is not the format that that should take. This report is here to help us. So we want to help the pen testers by giving a, a wide scope, a capability in our organization in order to understand multiple levels of control. We want the opportunity to gauge our capability to what Chris said. That win allows us to understand where our controls are working and where they're not. And again, this is not us versus them. This is friends coming together to make things better. Right, and and on the pen test side, let's let's remember too that, that there is a reason there's a pen test and, and we have to understand what their, their reasons are. And one more time, all the shells is not the reason. Um, and then, in terms of openness, if they're giving us, you know, source code to their web applications and, and full network maps, 
um, we need to make sure we're laying our cards on the table as well. These are the things I'm going to try. Here's where I struggled. Here, here's the exploit I tried to run, but it, it just wouldn't fire. These are all useful pieces of information for the client, uh, and they are they are the ones in charge of this this whole engagement. And lastly, make sure your recommendations are helpful. They, they that they fit the organization. That you give short-term and long-term recommendations, and maybe some some really cheap ones and some more involved, resource-intensive ones, because then the client gets uh, things to pick from, and it's going to be more likely to to be able to implement something that, that fits them well. Exactly, exactly. Well said, Chris. And like we've said, red exists to make blue better and blue needs red to define what is better. Uh, and as we move forward, that's the engagements we want to see. And so we'd like to thank you uh, for being here with us at the North Pole. Uh, and it wasn't all bad, Chris. I actually got uh, got some swag as well. Right. So fantastic. Thank you, Chris. See you guys around the con. See ya.